we're moving, we're grinding. All right, so we got topic number nine. We're gonna talk a little bit about social media, okay? And why you need to have, in my opinion, an active account in the following social media platforms, okay? Sorry, this is, okay. Social media, get active. All right, so here are the four platforms that are, in my opinion, must-haves, okay? On top of the list is gonna be your business Facebook page, okay? Since you're gonna be targeting moms and you're gonna be targeting uh, getting the word out, everybody in my generation, uh, I'll be 50 in January, is on Facebook, okay? I mean, I think they have over, there's certainly over a billion people on Facebook. And if you're on social media and not like Snapchat, you're probably on Facebook in some capacity. And what I can tell you is, is Facebook is the place to be to get the word out about who you are and what you're doing. And you need to create a Facebook page for your business. Like, it, like don't even ask me why, just do it, okay? That's how important it is, all right? So set yourself up, do yourself a favor. Once you've got your domain name, once you've got your business name, go into Facebook, go on to create a page and set one up. I don't think it's that challenging. Um, although I've been certainly wrong before. Create page, okay? So all you have to do, this is the older version. I haven't updated to the newer version of Facebook. I'm a dinosaur in that capacity. But what you wanna do is you wanna to go to home, create page, connect and share your customers or fans. All right? Marketplace listing, I'll have to get on that. All right, so get that set up. It's not that hard. If you set up a Facebook account, you know how it all works, okay? Um, and I won't spend time trying to help you figure out how you can do that. Um, but if you are having a hard time trying to do that, um, you know, you can reach out to me or you can post a question on our community and let's see what happens. Okay. But Facebook page has to happen. All right. Now the second most important thing is Instagram. Now it's debatable whether or not it's the second most important thing because a lot of people also like Twitter. But Twitter is different in the sense that you are targeting everyone on the internet, right? And if you get Twitter followers, we're talking Twitter followers. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Twitter followers across the world. I mean, that's who you're exposed to. Um, and from a business perspective, that's not a bad idea, all right? But here's why I think Instagram is the second most important social media platform that you could leverage, okay? It's because it's connected to Facebook. And the way that you can target and market people and sell advertise or, or, or buy advertising from Facebook, uh, it's, it's incredible. Like, it's so incredible. You can't believe how incredible it actually is. And as an advertiser, or someone who's paying for something to get my, to get the word out about my uh, my business, this is the level of targeting that you want. But if I'm not a business owner and I'm just a consumer, I'm terrified because Facebook has so much information about me. It's actually terrifying. All right, it's like legitimately terrifying. I didn't really go to McDonald's. Mm. All right, so. Um, what you want to do with Instagram is you want to make sure that you set up a business account. Uh, because if you don't set up a business account, you won't be able to connect your Instagram account to Facebook. Okay. So uh, when I look at my Facebook account, there are settings within my Facebook Actually, this is under running for us. There it is. Let me go back to that. So 
Sorry. My internet really isn't that slow. Okay, see Instagram here? So this is where you can connect your Instagram to your Facebook page. All right? But you gotta make sure that it's a business account. Business contact information, basic information, okay? And that way you can cross promote. Now, I don't have a WhatsApp app, but that's another good thing. And the other good thing about Facebook is um, a thing called Facebook Pixel. And we want to incorporate that into our website, but that's for another conversation on another day. That way you can track all your advertising and people who click on your ad on Facebook, they will be sent to wherever you send them and your Facebook Pixel will be able to, will be able to log all that information. Just like your Google analytics account that's going to look at everybody that comes to your website, Facebook Pixel does the same exact thing. It took me forever and 12 weeks to try to figure that whole thing out. But for you, for a little a minimum of 1995, you'll, you'll see how all that works. Okay. Um, I do have a video on face on how to, how to make an ad on uh, ad manager. And I'll incorporate, incorporate that into this topic of pages. Okay. Uh, because that's a good thing to know. So we talked about Twitter. And the other thing that you want to really consider too is Pinterest. Okay. Just by simply getting the word out. Pinterest is very picturesque, okay? And I'll show you what that looks like. I actually got into it for a really long time. Um, let me scoot this over here. So what you do with Pinterest is you set up a business account, all right? This is my business hub or sign fairies. Don't set up a personal one because you won't be able to connect it with a lot of other services that we're gonna go or one other service that we're gonna go over uh, as well. So. I'm weird. I have a really quirky, weird sense of humor. Um, this is the five deadly venoms kung fu board. Now boards are basically like a clipboard, right? So if you're going to put pictures all over a clipboard, physically take a picture, put it on a clipboard. It's the same dynamic. The only difference here is this is digital, right? Or this is, you know, something that you can do on the internet internet. So you can create boards, and when you post something, it's called a pin, okay? So you'll see. Like, you don't even want to know. Talking about modern warfare. All right, then I have a board called uh, the horror of it all. Like, I have a weird, quirky, like, fixation with horror movies. Like, old, you know, Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees kind of stuff. To take it even more weirder. I have a crazy fascination with Godzilla. I just kind of love how bad those movies were back in the day. And then I have, for a while, before I had really any followers at all, I had the power of fairy dust, which is a meme that I created. Um, here, I'll click on one. I think that they're funny. Some other people might not. Let me see if I can find one. Like, I would do crazy stuff just to be creative. So this is a random picture of a guy staring at a tortoise. So just to get the word out about sign fairies, I said, Sherry loved Bill. Despite Bill's early retirement and the emotional sign fairy celebration display wishing him well, Sherry refused to let him go. Bill quickly sang Love on the Rocks by Neil Diamond to her, and everyone cried. It was a tender moment they shared. I think I'm the only one that laughs at this stuff. I don't know. Call me crazy. Let me see if I can find another one. Because this, I know this isn't productive at all. It's actually completely unproductive. But hang with me for a second. Oh my god! Like I really like, I really like, I really like this one. Okay. Tori and Bella both surprised Steph with a science fairies. Remember Vegas 1994 display? Steph blushed, shook her head, and was grateful iPhones weren't around back then. The house echoed with laughter. <laughs> I cracked myself up. All right. I'm sorry. I digress. But get yourself active with Pinterest. 
okay? Because it's just another way for other people to find you. And there's a lot of women on Pinterest. I think everybody that's on Pinterest is a woman, okay? And then you can have like, like you have uh, YouTube subscribers and things like that. You can have people following you on Pinterest. And the more people you have following you on Pinterest, the more advertising you can sell. I got a long way to go. And I'm nowhere near where I want to be. I got six followers. It's not a lot. All right. So let's just go back to the Pinterest board so that you can understand it. Because it took me a little while to figure it out. So um, here's a sign fairies board. All right. And here are my boards. And these are all the things that I have. Right. The horror of it all, I just have some random stuff where I have animals doing crazy stuff. And then I have the power of fairy dust and Godzilla disco. All right. Call me weird. But I, everything that I do from Science Fairies goes into my celebrations displays. And I have 79 pins there. And I'm basically creating this social world. Okay. Because at the end of the day, you're going to want to ask your customers for the pictures that they take of your signs. And what you want to be able to tell them is, send us a picture of your sign, we'll post it on our social media, right? So if you're doing a Sweet 16 and you know uh, Martha has got a picture, you can tell everybody that we posted it on our Sign Fairies Facebook page or even our uh, Pinterest account and they can go there and check it out. It's just more options for you to think about, okay? There's two other options that you can think about also. Um, if you're like me and you like making videos and you know, you like helping people and you like doing stuff like that, you can create a YouTube page, YouTube channel, you know, do the same thing that I'm doing if you wanted to do that. And then LinkedIn is a whole different animal. And what I can tell you is I don't use LinkedIn in the way that I should, but it's very business centric. Okay. And it's not the first place people go to find out about celebration displays. Like if someone was like, hey, Margaret, I saw that you got a sign fairy sign yesterday. Can I go to their LinkedIn page and see what they're doing? No, I'm gonna say go to your Facebook page. So LinkedIn is a great place for business and developing business. And it could be a great place for posting more stuff. So you can do that. Now, the other thing that we would want to talk about is Buffer, okay? So Buffer is a tool that I use. Now, think about this for a second. If you didn't have Buffer, you're going to have to do a Facebook page post, all right? Like, you know, all the best wishes for Diana for her birthday. Thank you for letting us be a part of your special day. Boom. All right, then you got to do one for Instagram. Okay, boom, Martha, whatever, you know, you got to... Imagine doing this four times, all right? There's technology that's out there today. I've done a video on Buffer. There's another one that I did have a service to called Sprout Social. But at the end of the day, it was so much easier for me to use Buffer and it's only $15 a month and I can post everywhere. And then if I needed to get more analytical information that Sprout Social provides, I can do that, all right? So if you haven't watched the Buffer video on YouTube, my YouTube channel, and the link's here below, do that. Because this makes this process of getting your social media presence out there so much simpler. And you gotta have it. I mean, it's not a question of if. You have to have this. Coupled with your website, coupled with Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, I mean, you could do TikTok, you could do Snapchat. Uh, you know, I don't do TikTok or Snapchat just because I really haven't time to figure it all out, all right? And if somebody does, please enlighten me on why I should be on there. But my kids use those more than anything else. They're snapping Snapchat stuff. I don't understand. it. I probably should. Shame on me, okay? So, and how you set this stuff up isn't complicated. So you go to Instagram. You set up your business account, right? You may not even already have a personal account. Just create another one that's for business. Twitter. Listen, 
Twitter is bananas. I've never gotten into Twitter. Um, I, I did for a while, but I just couldn't catch on to it. I don't know why. Um, maybe it's because social media has become such an integral part and a thread of everyone's life that if you post something that has any conflict or controversy attached to it, you could expose yourself to some liability that you never thought that you could be exposed to before. Okay. Just let me tell you that. Um, you want to be really careful about what you're posting. And on a personal note, I know this isn't a personal thing, but I am no longer posting stuff on Facebook personally. Okay. On my personal Facebook page, I don't want anything to do with it. Um, and it's partly because of what I said before. They know everything about me that I don't want them to know about. Same with Google, same with Amazon. I mean, this is a privacy issue. Remember we were talking about this before and there's not any laws directing how your information is being utilized. And Google, Amazon, and Facebook, along with um, Apple, you know, are capturing a lot of information on you. Information is the new oil, okay? So if you can capture people's information, that's good, all right? It's like striking a well full of oil. The data and the information on a billion people a day is just unbelievable. And the amount of data that's being used, I know I'm getting off topic, but I'm sorry, um, is overwhelming. It's overwhelming to the point that you have to be a part of it. And if you're not a part of it, you're gonna be behind the eight ball. And the last thing you wanna be is behind the eight ball. You wanna be an innovator. Okay, um, so that's another thing too. I didn't know what hashtags were either, but that's important to mention hashtags as well. Um, hashtags are something on, uh, that are used to allow someone, it's my understanding, allow somebody to do a quick search on something specific. So if I did a search right now on Twitter, for hashtag sign fairies, and I did a search on it. This is what comes back. Sign fairies in Atlanta. Who would have known? Why does this guy have sign fairies? All right, and then there's mine. I'm the third one on the list. Sign fairies. So sign fairies, hashtag sign fairies is a quick way to do a search on something that you hashtag, right? You know, um, you see all these hashtags. So what you want to get in the, what, what, what you want to get familiar with is actually doing hashtags. And so in my case, hashtag sign fairies or do something unique like hashtag Renick or something that's unique to you that someone who wants to find out more about you can do this. I mean, look, look at all the stuff that's coming up now, right? We have this sign express Manchester. Look, that's Manchester, England, right? It's gotta be. Maybe it's Manchester, Vermont. I don't know, but here we go. You know, and you, and you could keep going if you want. So hashtags aren't a bad thing, right? And you want to get yourself acclimated to that. Now, Signing up to do all this stuff isn't a hard process. It just takes time, all right? And some of the process is arduous. I mean, Facebook couldn't make it more complicated. And they don't have customer service people. They just have areas where you can go and do a, ask, ask a question and you'll find out how to do stuff. But like that takes time. And it sucks. I'll be honest with you. I hate it. It's the new norm. Uh, Sign Fairy, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Okay, so you need to sign up all of those. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is 
and I do have a video about this, but I want to show you buffer very briefly here because it will really change how you think about social media. Because if you had to post four different posts on each different social media platform that you have, you're going to lose your mind. I'm telling you, you might think it's not that big of a deal when you first start out, but doing it day in and day out, if you have five signs that you rented, all right, let's do the math on that. So you rent five signs and you have five different pictures, five times four is you have 20 posts that you got to do. That'd probably take you an hour to do. Here, you just got to post one thing. You know what I mean? And in the video that I created for YouTube, I show you how you do it because it's not hard. If you can post on Facebook, you can post on Buffer. And down here below, this is manage your social accounts. So for $15 a month, okay, you can post up to, I believe, eight different sources, all right? So you can add, oops, you add social media, all right? So I've not updated I have not updated my LinkedIn page or my LinkedIn profile. You can see that this is my $15 per month package. These are all the places that I've already set up. They have buffer for business. And what that will allow you to do is if you go to the next tab, if you go back to the original page, or not, buffer dashboard. One of the things as a byproduct of all of this effort that you're going to be doing is you are going to be able to define your audience. So think about this for just a second. Just stay with me. I know we're talking about social media. Social media will allow you to create options in a way that I never thought possible. So let's think this through for a second, okay? In the previous topic, we talked about asking for permission for people to opt in to get a newsletter from you, okay? So if I go to my Square account and I pull up all my customers, I have roughly 220 some odd customers and a bulk of them, I'm gonna say over 80% of them have opted in to receive either an email or a text message from me, okay? Now, what I can tell you is 90% of that audience is women, okay? So imagine if I had 2,000 of those. It's not a lot, but imagine. Imagine if you had 10,000 of those, okay? So my point is, is that you have way to connect with people via newsletter. You have way to connect with people via Facebook. You have way to connect with people over via Instagram. You have a way to connect with people via Twitter. You have a way to connect with people via Pinterest. You have a way to connect with people via YouTube, okay? Um, you could do LinkedIn, okay? You could do TikTok. You could do Snapchat, right? This is where everybody's living. Everybody's living in this world, this virtual world, okay? And you need to grab some market share. Because if I go to YouTube, this is my YouTube uh, dashboard, okay? And if I go to analytics, all right, this is my analytics page, all right? This will tell me that I've had 17,000 views, which you may think is a lot. It isn't. It's not a lot at all, actually, okay? Over the last 28 days, I've added 322 subscribers. All right, that even gives you an example. Maybe it doesn't. Tells me within the last 28 days how many hours of watch time. 1,200 hours. 1,200 hours people have watched my videos. Isn't that baffling? It baffles me. Okay. Now, the other thing that's important to remember too, as I scoot this over, Google is going to track your audience. All right. So check this out. So over the last 28 days, yep, 28 days, there it is right here. Okay. I've had a total of 
let's just call it 6,000 unique viewers. The average views per viewer, let's just call it three, and I've had a 35% increase from the previous 28 days of 323 subscribers. This will give me a breakdown of how many people have watched and viewed my stuff. And it'll also tell me which ones they've actually viewed. Okay. When your viewers are on YouTube. So now it's going to tell me all the times. Why do you want that? Imagine if you have a million of these people. Imagine if you have 500,000 people on Instagram. People are making a shitload of money because advertisers are buying impressions of unique audiences that people have developed. Okay? Look, it's not, look, this isn't, this isn't gonna happen to everybody. It's probably not even gonna happen to me. But my point is, is that like, if you're thinking about growing your audience at any capacity, you're only helping yourself. You're only making things better for you. Here's the top countries, okay? What times, what type, watch time from subscribers. So almost 71% of the people aren't subscribed to my channel who watch it. That's not good. And I have no subtitles, which I'm figuring out is bad. You should do that. But check this out. 84.5% of the 6,000 viewers are women. If you're a woman, female, watching this, do you know that companies spend a lot of money targeting you, all right? Um, and if I have access to that, okay, in a way that other people don't, that's a benefit to me. So we're talking about social media. Here's the other thing too, look. 40% of the people are between 35 and 44 years old. I have an audience of 25 to 43 year olds is 20%. And the other is 45 to 55 years old is 32%. Of my population, that's who, that's who I have. See more, what does that mean? Oh, look at this. It's gonna break it down even further. How scary is that? All right, breaks it down. What percentage are female versus male? And look at this, guys. Watch time hours. It's crazy. This is the kind of data that's out there that advertisers want. I won't send you back, sorry. I'm just bringing this up because since this is a part of your business that you have to do, you might as well understand it. Okay. I'm understanding more and more each day. I'm understanding more right now. Okay. So this is, this is the way of the world. This is the way that the business world works. Okay. Um, the type of business world that is unique and ever changing. Social media is here to stay. It's the fabric of our lives, right? We want to be heard. We want to be seen. We want to get it out there. There's pros and cons to that, okay? And you need to have a presence because you have a business, all right? I'm not going to go into Buffer all that much because I have a video on it now. But do you understand now the importance of the following four things? Facebook page business, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Do you think that that's important? Do you think it's of a value to you when you say to a mom, hey, listen, will you send me a picture of Robert in front of my sign fairy sign so that I can post it on my social media area? Yeah. You get more women talking about it. You get more moms talking about it. And that's what you want. You want people talking about what you're doing. All right? And... That's never a bad thing. Newsflash, OK? 
okay? If you have young children, pictures of young children in front of your signs, please, please, I want to stress this, like DEFCON 5, like the missiles are in the air, we're all going to be nuked in the next 10 minutes. If you don't ask for permission from moms and from parents to post a picture of their child on your social media page, you are opening yourself up to a level of liability that you want nothing to do with. It's terrifying. God forbid you post a social media post with, with a mom who's a paranoid about having her kid uh, out on the internet because of pedophiles, right? Like they could sue you for that. And if you don't have permission, and it left at least some sort of texting document asking permission to do that, you are opening your, your, yourself up to some liability. Okay, so just word of the wise, be cognizant of that. Okay, so you have to set up these accounts and you have to really consider getting a buffer account. And I wish I could have uh, affiliate marketing link to send you to because I could get benefit from that, but I don't, all right? Just tell them right next to you. There you have it. Topic number nine. Um, if you got questions, post about them. We'll get other people's answer on them. We'll figure this deal out. All right? Okay, everybody. Have an awesome rest of your day.